So Mr. Gates funded gene editing, the CRISPR-Cas9 technology. And it's interesting, you know, CRISPR is re- that technology of absorbing a virus is the way bacteria deal with viruses. So they just see, saw how nature works and then appropriated as, as they mention. And he funded the California scientists and the uh, scientists in Cambridge. Then they started to fight. So he funded both to fight the patent. And he has a company called Editas that holds gene editing patents. But he got the Berkeley scientists the Nobel Prize. And this at a time when other scientists were finding out that it's such an imprecise and disrupting technology. Just give you one or two examples. You know, it talks about precision, but a, a, a study found that 1,500 single nucleotide mutations took place and 100 larger deletions and insertions when one gene was edited, one gene. 1,500 unpredictable impacts. An increasing body of knowledge is showing there is total unpredictability in the outcome. I remember very clearly, they were trying to, you know, in India, we love the horns of cow and biodynamic agriculture is so based on the cow horns. And um, and we have festivals, you know, I think 9th, 13th. On the 14th, we have the festival of the animals. Matupongal. And they decorate the horns of the cows and the cows are left free. You can't, you can't rope them in. They won't work. They're on a holiday. And they go around with these beautiful, decor, decor, and you know, all, they're all over the place, these beautifully decorated animals. And, and when you take animals and put them in a factory farm, those horns become a problem. You know, they start fighting each other, just like the pig's um, tail becomes a problem in factory condition and the beak of the chicken becomes a problem. So they de-beak, they burn the newborn chicken's beak so they won't fight each other. They detail the pigs. So they they create conditions of violence and then do more violence to solve the problem, which can't be solved. Anyway, gene editing, some scientists in California said we will now gene edit a bull, uh, we'll get gene edit animals to be hornless for the meat industry to have more bigger factory farms. But from somewhere in these gene edited animals, there was huge bacterial infection. And you cannot sell bacteria infected meat. So I remember this debate because they tried to get permission to sell it as for beef and they were not allowed. So the imprecision is so known and yet the desperation is so huge. Because why is gene editing being pushed? Gene editing is being pushed because not only can they not work with the old GMOs anymore, they're trying very hard to pretend their nature. They're trying to pass it as a natural technology so that they can deregulate for biosafety and get out of labeling. So once they get gene editing through as natural, it will not require safety. So there'll be all this stuff happening in your food and you won't know it. And you won't be able to make the choice that I don't want to eat this stuff because it will have a label natural. So we are at a very dishonest moment, extremely dishonest moment in terms of our food. And this, because movements have been so successful, because the agro-organic movement has been so successful, because the biodynamic movement has been so successful, this is why the aggression to introduce fake technologies and force it on society has become the single most biggest agenda for the industry. When I say industry, I mean both the financial part of it and the biotech part of it, the part that wants to control the seed and now to control the food. So synthetic fertilizers began with synthetic, you know, began the introduction of synthetic elements, artificial elements into the food system. Then you had, instead of, of breeding of whole organisms with whole organisms, you now had genetic engineering to really not have the 
the clearance of the organism to accept modification. It was a forcing of the organism. And in the process, you actually created fake seed. Why do I call it fake seed? Because the nature of seed is to arise. The word in India for seed is bija. Ja is life, bija is that which arises on its own forever and ever and ever. Because the seed doesn't ever get exhausted. But the idea of creating terminator seed, non-renewable seeds, patented seeds, is trying to stop the urge of life from renewal. And it's worse than that, because not only is it trying to control the seed, it's then trying to criminalize the farmers who save seed and exchange seed. And this is the reason I save seeds. This is the reason I started Navdanya. This is the reason I do the work I do. We've created 150 community seed banks in India to reclaim seed as a commons. We've written laws that say seeds and animals and plants are not inventions. So in India, it's not patentable. And we have laws on farmers' rights that farmers are the first breeders and their rights cannot be alienated. And I do hope some of you will find your way to Navdanya. I, I met some of people who have already been and I know the, uh, the young people who are going through the course come and visit. This, uh, this finding ways to extract, to make profit and turn renewability of life into non-renewability, to turn the abundance of life into scarcity is what the fake food is all about. So the fake food begins with, you know, the high fructose corn syrup made from GMO corn and you never hear of the harm it's doing. And because it's addictive, it's it, in the America, in America, it's put in baby food, it's put in sausages, it's put in everything because it creates the urge to eat more. But now babies and children are getting cirrhosis of the liver because this molecules goes and hits straight away. The, because food is the currency of life, it is the communication between the soil and the plants. I want to just share with you my, my understanding of this, that 